It was a conference about artificial intelligence in the architecture, engineering and the construction in Helsinki. The future in this industry relies on this kind of applications. They specifically wanted to know how we did it and what were the, the obstacles. There is no off-the-shelf solution, so you really need to spend some time. What was your personal highlight during the event? Another highlight for me was really talking to the industry partners about the interfaces, about their needs, how to use AI to achieve smart buildings. Reduce the computational time and dealing with huge data. The topic is AI. I don't want to say big words against AI because it can be possible so soon. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Folge vom Global Podcast. Schön, dass ihr wieder alle dabei seid. Und heute geht es um ein spannendes Thema, und zwar künstliche Intelligenz im Bauwesen. Bei Global ist das natürlich ein ganz großes Thema. Wir haben ja auch vor kurzem unsere oder auch deine digitale Assistenz Mia auf den Markt gebracht. Die kannst du jetzt sowohl über die Webseite als auch über das Statikprogramm ansteuern. Und das ist der erste Schritt in der Bewältigung von Aufgaben in der künstlichen Intelligenz. Also einer der ersten erfolgreichen abgeschlossenen Projekte. Natürlich wird die auch permanent weiterentwickelt. Und was sich sonst noch alles so tut im Bereich der künstlichen Intelligenz, da habe ich unsere zwei Spezialisten dabei, einmal den Michael und einmal den Dogukan. Und da wir das auch international machen, Dogukan, international Mitarbeiter, also aus dem internationalen Raum, werden wir diese Folge heute auch auf Englisch machen. Ja, und deshalb switche ich jetzt auch aufs Englische und sage Hello Dogukan, Hello Michael, nice that you are today my guests in my global podcast. Hey, hi Daniel. Hi Daniel, thanks for inviting. Perfect, so as in the introduction already mentioned, Today's topic is the artificial intelligence in the construction industry, mainly about the last event you have attended. But before we jump right into it, it would be very good because maybe some guys don't know you that you introduce yourself. And I would say, Michael, you do the start because maybe one of our podcast listeners already know you because you were already one of my guests in my podcast yeah very happy to do that so yeah welcome everyone also from my side and hello again for those who listened to that i think it is two years ago uh, podcast um, was very nice um, yeah my name is uh, michael kraus um, i work in team k together with uh, dogokan we develop uh, different ai applications do research there And uh, yeah, we were lucky to have been able to go to a conference and I'm really looking forward to this uh, podcast today. Perfect. Thank you very much. And now let's come to Dogukan. Yep. Hi, Daniel. And hi, everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm Dogukan Karatashi and I work for Dolubal Software for three years now. I'm also a part of Team K as a team leader. Team K is like the R&D Department for Dolubal Software, and we're implementing API, web services, cloud, and AI applications to our program. Perfect. So, Michael, you have already mentioned the conference you and Dugu Khan have attended. So maybe you could give me an overview about the event. What was it? The people, the organizer, also the topics. So, in a, as a summary, it was a conference about artificial intelligence in the architecture, engineering and the construction in Helsinki. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I've been uh, quite a veteran to that uh, because I was there with the university the last three years. And uh, this year I was uh, really happy that we from Lua Software also went there and uh, did give a talk. So the AI in AEC um, that is uh, organized mainly by Mr. Vesa um, Yavinen, who is with the AI uh, NS group 
in uh, Finland. And uh, yeah, they're doing the organization of uh, that conference Yeah, since I think 2020. Um, in the past, they had to do that in, a, in an online version. So just uh, joining via Zoom or listening online. And I think this year, the really nice thing was that we could gather in Helsinki and uh, exchange ideas, listen to the talks and so forth. Um, yeah, so I think you can imagine this this conference to be uh, not just a research thing, meaning that just the people from academia are there. No, I think the intention of that conference is really to give the whole spectrum from state-of-the-art research in universities up to uh, people in the offices, in the companies, uh, showing what they do uh, along machine and deep learning and uh, what is their struggles, what is their... Um, you know, things which worked well. And I think that was the, the spirit and the idea of that conference to give a platform for input talks, but also enough room for discussions um, and so forth. Yeah, I would hand over to Dogokan and maybe you can share more uh, information or what I forgot to, to tell. Yeah, yeah, that was a brief description of the conference. Yeah, it's it's been um, four times now, this AI in ASC conference. It's uh, mainly organized by Finnish Association of Civil Engineers. And the vibe in the conference was so good because um, since it's been the fourth time, but um, I think this is the first time in face-to-face. And um, there was also some social events like getting together or going to city reception. So we had the chance to get, get to know people closely from the same industry. And... Yeah, as you know, uh, the digitalization of the construction industry is the one of the hottest topics in in our industry now, and um, it's great to gather all the universities and the biggest players in the industry at the same time. So you can imagine that we can we we can experience the theory and the practice at the same time, and we ch- we exchange ideas to through this conference we also presented and chat with other presenters and um, I think that was that was a quite good experiment because uh, as you know people feels like the future in this industry relies on this kind of applications so it was it was a great opportunity to get to know what others are doing yeah yeah, maybe I can can add um, so that our audience may also get an impression of uh, the attendees. Um, yeah, as I said, so there were, I would say, pretty uh, well-known people in the field being, for example, uh, from Arup uh, UK with uh, Rob uh, Greg. So he gave uh, one of the first keynotes and I think it was uh, nice to listen to you know, the version uh, or vision, not the version, <laughs> the vision of uh, Arab towards uh, the impl- uh, implications of what AI means for our industry. Uh, obviously, uh, Rob gave his point of view under the uh, viewpoint of being a consultant, being an architect, being a civil engineer. Uh, but still, it was nice, uh, the breadth uh, of what they are doing uh, meaning starting from surrogate modeling, which is also a topic for Global, uh, up to his final slides on diving into the quantum computing world, which uh, I think we will also uh, will see a lot in, in the future when it comes to this uh, yeah, big data AI um, questions. Um, yeah, on the other hand, we had uh, some nice uh, inputs also from... Uh, uh, Carolina Tortilla uh, with uh, Trimble. Uh, she gave some yeah interesting ideas on how she sees AI in the era of uh, retrofit. I think that uh, resonates well with uh, you know uh, another challenge which our industry is facing, namely sustainability and even more circularity. And yeah, it was impressive to see what uh, what Trimble is doing uh, at this end using data using AI. Yeah, and I think there was a, a lot of uh, uh, industries from manufacturing as well. Uh, we talked to guys from Canem, 
a big street manufacturer, but also Hilti people were there and a lot more. Uh, but I think that really underlines that this conference was a good mix of people from academia and uh, from industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So as a summary re regarding the audience, the industry were there, also people from the research and development from the academy parts or universities and so on, other organization. So a huge mix of different yeah, companies, organizations, pretty cool. And Tuguka, you have already mentioned that we from Tubo Software had also a um, presentation about artificial intelligence at Luba. Maybe mm -hmm. you could tell me there more about that. Yeah, yeah, of course. So we are presenting, we started our presentation with our API and web services technology first, because it's the first key point to go to new, um, future implementations of AI, because for AI impl implementations, we already need huge data sets. So our API technology is the key point to achieve that in the first place. So we started with API, what is API, what is web service. And uh, also we have some cloud technologies too. We presented that. And then uh, we switched to what is possible to achieve with this data. The first project is our assistant, Mia. So we already implemented it, as you know, and we uh, presented our Mia how it works and how we implemented it. And then uh, we mentioned about our future projects like text -to model, implementing large language models into the, uh, into the program. Also some optimization tools with uh, machine learning algorithms. And um, yeah, finally, what is the possibilities in the industry? What, what can be done in the structural analysis software? Um, and it was, it was, very interesting for others too, because um, I would say the attendees are coming mostly from architectural and manufacturer side. So there were no other software companies for structural analysis and design um, who presented at this uh, conference. So I think that there are two main reasons that um, people find interesting. One is the um, our technology with cloud API and server um, solver as a server. So it means you can take take our solver, implement your own workflow, and customize your structural analysis experience. So that means you have a solution. You can implement our solution to yours. So it's like a open endpoint for structural analysis. That was that was the main reason people were so interested in our projects, and also the second reason that are implemented implementations with large language models because it makes the user experience so easier um, and gives some new opportunities to our users. So I would say we were, we were the only one um, in this area and that's why people wanted to talk with us, chat with us, hey, how we can use it also. So that was the best part for us, I would say. Yeah, I, I totally agree um, to what you just said, Dugu Khan. Um, I also saw it that uh, what uh, like we delivered as a talk was uh, pretty complementary to a lot of the points raised, especially on the first day, from uh, people from uh, the manufacturing and, and uh, consultancy companies. And I think that's uh, very important, uh, important that we got this point out Uh, that uh, within Global and our web services, uh, we allow to do a lot of tasks downstream, for example, surrogate modeling, because uh, with the API, uh, you can now synthetically uh, generate a lot of data about your problem and train a surrogate model for later um, yeah, interrogation. Uh, that, for example, was presented a lot of times from people from university or the industry like Arab, that they did some like, hey, I have a simulator. I need to figure out how to generate data. Afterwards, I want to um, yeah, train and deploy my machine learning model. And we made the point, hey, that's on our uh, roadmap. We are going to provide that to a certain extent when it comes to structural analysis. And uh, yeah, we had also a nice uh, <laughs> gathering in the evening 
with a manufacturer where they were uh, saying like, hey, we were searching for such a thing. Uh, would be cool if you could do that for connections. And I think that's uh, really why we were there. Uh, get in touch with the interested people, give our points of view and uh, tell uh, what is the pro of using the workflows we, we are looking into. Wow, great. So pretty interesting, especially from that point of view that every engineer knows their desktop applications from the, let's say, from the last century, it started with desktop applications. And now the desktop applications became so good that you also cal can calculate pretty fast, huge structures. And now the whole engineering consultancies, other companies who are doing the draft, the planning, and also, yeah, the, the planning, the structure analysis for bigger buildings are also creating their own tools, their own workflows. And therefore, they need also from other software vendors, software com companies, kind of interfaces, which we can provide them as web services, API, cloud technologies, and also AI. And therefore, it's very good that you were there and in order to present the solutions, it's very good that the users can see that they can rely on the solutions we can provide them. And therefore, it's very good that you hold this presentation in order to give them an overview of what is right now possible and what will be also in the future possible. Okay, very cool. So for sure, you have already mentioned it. You were also in touch with a lot of visitors, attendees during the conference. You talked to a lot of people. So what was the feedback from the visitors and maybe also some customers about the presentation you hold yeah and maybe you can also go a little bit deeper into the specific questions they had in common regarding the topic ai in the construction industry um yeah so the kind of question we received were quite uh, diverse um because we presented a whole breadth of topics uh, like Dogokan already said uh, we started with uh, our web services um i think Dogokan can answer to that questions uh, if you want to jump in right now or... yeah yeah i can start if you want so as michael said the questions were very diverse because um, attendees were coming from different areas, mostly. Uh, for example, um, there was a steel manufacturer who wants to have a um, solution for his steel joints in the program. The, the opportunity is that um, he wants to implement our solution using API and web services, but also we can all, we can create some machine learning algorithm to find the best layout of this steel connection. So he said it's it's a great opportunity for steel manufacturers because um, that means that they can do some pre designs to um, I don't know find the costs or timing or management and um, and so on. So. People usually would like to go in this pre-design with AI because, as I said, going for an engineer to do some design, it requires so much time. So mostly architects and manufacturers want some uh, some pre-designs to um, take care of the management. And uh, there was a company from Canada, again, um, a startup for architects who runs this generative designs for layouts they want also some uh, create some structural analysis models too so it's a uh, it's a huge topic for them and um, as i said the big the uh, most interesting part is that we have we have integrated our api technology to cloud so that means you can create um, your script or create some endpoints with your own solution and then send the calculation to cloud and they get the results back so this was the uh, this was the most interesting part. So as you know, in the in the past, um, you get some PDFs from an architect. You open your PDFs, you open your um, structural analysis program, and try to model it. But now, uh, with this technology, we allow programs to talk with each other. You don't need a um, human between. Now we can integrate these programs and find 
the proper solution, the optimum solution. And also, as you know, we, we had a chat with Hilti. So they're um, producing uh, still anchors. Also, they have a software for designing the still anchors. The, uh, the question is how we can um, get the loads and uh, other structural analysis elements from the global model. So that's why they would like to have an interface between the, our program and with theirs. So uh, this was this was the chat with them. This applies to all the companies, I, I would say, because if you're a engineering company, too, you have some certain workflows of of the calculations, and that's why they would like to make an automated workflow and uh, give to their engineers to be sure in the quality. So that's all, that's also one of the hottest topics in the conference, I would say. Yeah. Um, another kind of questions uh, went in the direction really technical about uh, Mia. So uh, I received several questions from different people. They were also looking into some kind of uh, chatbot over their own data from the company or from the website and so forth. So uh, yeah, they specifically wanted to know how we did it and what were the the obstacles and and all the things. Um, because uh, my biggest learning from uh, creating Mia was that uh, there is no off the shelf solution. So you really need to spend some time uh, on data creation again, uh, but also prompt engineering and uh, the grounding or fine tuning of that model. Um, yeah, so we had different uh, people here, but uh, as you know, we we cannot share at this point in time uh, all informations what we do. Uh, but uh, to a certain extent, uh, we were able to at least give some hints or directions what we did, what was a big obstacle, and uh, what they may care about. Yeah, another guy uh, posed some questions on uh, yeah, pretty technical things like what kind of solvers did you use for the AI training and such things. So we will have a short story with, uh, with uh, our uh, implementation or the provider of the AI of Mia. Mr. Luba Senior just uh, agreed on having that <laughs> so that we can give some specs. And uh, yeah, there will be a press release uh, in, in some weeks from now uh, about some more insights than what we could share up to now. Yeah, and then uh, people were also interested in uh, this generative AI, what we do in terms of uh, solving inverse problems. Uh, inverse problems means that uh, I request some outcomes of an analysis like a certain uh, amount of cost or minimum weight. And uh, these kind of AIs, they will provide you the feasible designs. For example, for the connections, um, a user would request, hey, give me the most lightweight and most uh, uh, or less uh, costly um, design options. And then this kind of generative neural network would provide you with, okay, you can take this, this and that uh, connector and then you should uh, fulfill the requested performances. Yeah, so there were some questions how that could work, what kind of models we used there. And um, yeah, so we provided some some insights on approaches what we, we have taken because in our presentation, we shared also some, uh, you know, video demos that people can really understand what uh, is happening in the background and how you can potentially use that uh, in the near future within FM or Airstab. Wow, cool, pretty impressive. So there was indeed a huge interest into these solutions. And I'm also pretty curious in which direction it will go in the long term future. So let's come back to you. When you think back to the conference, what was your personal highlight during the event? Yeah, from my side, as, as Michael said, the um, presentations from our group was pretty inter uh, interesting. Because I think um, they really value their R and D department, so it's it's a good thing for them. One of the interesting thing is that you reduce the calculation time for CFD simulations. Because, as you know, if you go with the high scale in the CFD simulations, maybe it can take hours or days. Yeah, but um, some machine learning algorithm implementations can can suggest to reduce the iterations, and uh, that was one of the most 
impressive things in my eyes for machine learning algorithms for using <clears throat> large language models i would also say one of the keynote speakers from autodesk uh, i'm sorry i forgot the name adam could adam be? Gaia. yeah adam guy they developed a, a workout for um, creating a layout with building units and the green areas so with with a uh, llm implementation you can talk with your model and optimize the ratio between the building units and the green areas. That two topics were um, interesting for me. Yeah, I, I agree. So for me, also one of the highlights was uh, this talk by Adam because he gave some insight on the technical um, implementation, how they did it. Pretty interestingly, they did not use the latest uh, GPT models, but an older one for that task of, uh, yeah, I would maybe call it also performance-driven design using language models. Yeah, it was interesting, very interesting, because uh, we are at the moment are also looking into this uh, text-to-model thing. Um, so far, we followed a bit a different approach, but saw some similarities, like you don't need the biggest you know, language model to do the job because of uh, several technical reasons, uh, that's the case. But uh, yeah, it was really nice that uh, we could listen to his uh, keynote, but afterwards uh, we also had the time to directly chat uh, with him about specific questions we, we had in addition. Yeah, and I mean, another highlight for me was really talking to the industry partners about the interfaces, about their needs, uh, making these connections, because I think that was one of the key things why i drove there um give the speech uh, give the presentation but also meet and connect to people who are willing to look into that problems uh, in order to get former or new collaborations um, together pretty cool mm -hmm. so i can imagine that you gathered a lot of new information during this conference and so what also would be for me interesting next to that what you have presented and also what is about the whole let's say planning of buildings have you also explored other trends in the construction industry concerning the artificial intelligence maybe michael you could start yeah definitely i mean um it's uh, it's really not my my field of uh, of work but what for me the impression was is that uh, in a, our people think about ai enabling kinds of smart buildings um in the sense of uh, i can give feedback via different interfaces like a smartwatch or the um, mobile phone to a home and then uh, steer it using some kind of uh, machine or deep learning algorithm so there were several, uh, I think, talks and discussions around that topics, uh, how to use AI to achieve smart buildings. I mean, as a software vendor, Global in the end is uh, responsible that uh, these buildings are still structurally feasible and reliable. But uh, I think that kind of uh, AI trend um, is be beyond what we are looking at. But still, I think it, it uh, makes our lives uh, comfortable uh, or more comfortable in the future. So that was interesting. Uh, another uh, obvious topic, I think, is the stress on sustainability and optimization uh, via computational design. Uh, a lot of topics uh, still deal with that things. Yeah, now people are looking into newer or most state-of-the-art algorithms like language models uh, to achieve this uh, optimization and being more sustainable. Um, yeah, that's a trend. Uh, I think global we are also hitting in that directions with our different uh, optimization and generative design um, tools. But uh, there is other people in the market looking into that, but also requesting uh, solutions for that. I think that um, industry trend at, at, at the moment is mostly, uh, as I said, uh, reduce the computational time and dealing with huge data. So from this um, keynote speaker, um, Carolina from Trimble, um, she explained that they are using this artificial intelligence to deal with the point clouds because um, they have some hardware, as you know, to scan the buildings, the old historical buildings and so, and so on. But um, data size of the, this point clouds are so huge, it's uh, it's a bit hard to deal with. 
And um, that's why they're implementing some AI solutions to get the data and process it. And as I said, the um, reduce the time of the computational time for CFT solutions, this is a trend now. At the moment, there is no such a thing as generative design for built environment, I would say. Sometimes you see on the social media that uh, people give some prompts, say, uh, create me this floor plan, but um, uh, with DALL-E or mid-journey, I don't know. But uh, at the moment, it's not applicable to real world. But um, since the topic is AI, I don't want to say big words against AI because it can be possible so soon. But um, uh, as I said, at the moment, it's just uh, for handling big data and reduce calculation time. Wow, pretty cool. So a lot of content about artificial intelligence in the whole field of the construction industry beginning from the planning of buildings to also the execution of buildings and also afterwards. Yeah. So everything what has also to do with smart buildings. So pretty interesting. And therefore, Dogukan and Michael, thank you very much that you were my guest into my podcast and gave our audience a very nice overview about this beautiful event in Helsinki. So to finalize our meeting i ask every guest and you're also my guests their favorite buildings yeah so at least oh you have one favorite building and therefore i want also to know from you what is your favorite building and why dogukan you start yeah okay so my favorite building is changing time to time when i visit new places I would say, but um, at the moment, I would say um, the Central Istanbul Contemporary Arts Museum because uh, it was an old and abundant power plant in Istanbul. It was not, it's from, I think, the early 20th century. Um, but now they renovated it and put this metal mesh over the concrete core, which is, which is very cool in my eyes. And I all, always find inspirational when they renovate an abundant building to give a new soul to this building. It's it's a real real cool building, I would say. Great, Michael, and you? Cool. <clears throat> um, yes. Yeah, so I think last time uh, I said that my favorite building was the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Um, it is still under the top three. But uh, as uh, Dogo Khan said, visiting new places, um, I would today pick the Campi Chapel in Helsinki. Um, that is that uh, yeah, timber made uh, chapel like in the central midtown. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's just a very nice architectural shape uh, within this historical site, um, this Campi Square. And uh, I think the architects, they really achieved that you have this double curved, uh, very sharp curvature uh, and still be able to make that out of, uh, uh, out of timber, out of wood. And yeah, we, we have been there, Dugu and me, uh, before we flew home. And uh, for me, it was really nice to be there. Um, yeah get in that mood, get that spirit of, of silence in, in there and uh, be just impressed by the architecture. Um, so to say, yeah, uh, Golden Gate Bridge is a bridge. It's impressive by size and dimension. Um, yeah, over the past couple of months, I was uh, impressed by the Campy Chapel due to its beautiful, um, uh, you know, aesthetics and uh, having this contrast being a very quiet uh, place within the city. Yeah, so this time I would pick it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, perfect. So guys, I want to say thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to have you in this meeting. And I'm really proud and also happy that you are part of Global and that you work in Team K for the future innovations and future solutions here at Global for our customers and also for other users. Therefore, also, I wish you great success. And in this case, I wish also the audience a lot of fun with the podcast episode and looking forward to be part of the next time. Therefore, have a great day and goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.